What's up guys, my name is Brandon and this is my very first video on ICU's channel. So I just wanna thank ICU for giving me the opportunity to post on his channel. And if you guys are interested in checking out some of my content, I also make content on jailbreaking and iOS. You can check the link down in the description below. So today I'll be showing you how to downgrade or update to iOS 10.2 in order to jailbreak your iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch using Luca Tedesco's new Yalu jailbreak. And this will be the easiest method and a method where you won't lose any of your important data. Now, if you aren't familiar with the iOS 10.2 jailbreak, I will leave a link in the description below that explains it in great detail. But basically, Luca Tedesco released a jailbreak for select iOS 10.2 devices, but of course urged us all to update to iOS 10.2 unless you're on the iPhone 7 or 7 Plus. So the jailbreak currently only works for the iPhone 6S, the 6S Plus, the SE, and the iPad Pro running on iOS 10.2, but all other 64-bit devices will be supported soon, along with the iPhone 7 running on iOS 10.1.1. All right, so now let's talk about the downgrade process and why you need to do this as soon as possible. So first off, with this method, you will be able to maintain most of your data. As I mentioned earlier, the only data that you could possibly lose in this process is text messages, non-iCloud notes, and non-iCloud contacts. And the reason for this is because Apple and iTunes actually block restores made from higher firmware. So for instance, if you're on iOS 10.2.1, but you have a backup saved, you won't be able to use that backup for 10.2 since it is an older firmware than 10.2.1. So as of right now on January 27th, Apple is still signing iOS 10.2 and they likely will be for just a little while longer. But once Apple does stop signing the firmware, we will not be able to upgrade or downgrade to that firmware in iTunes. So that's why you need to get on this as soon as possible. And just a side note, I actually did some research and made a spreadsheet showing how long Apple keeps the signing window open for each iOS version ever since iOS 9.0 and one interesting thing I discovered is that Apple didn't close a signing window for any iOS version before seven days so that means that the signing window usually stays open for at least a week after the next version in this case 10.2.1 gets released. Now, if you're watching this video on a desktop, make sure to check the annotation on the screen right now, which will indicate whether or not 10.2 is still being signed. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So to start this process, you will need a computer and the latest version of iTunes installed, as well as the corresponding IPSW file for your device. So as you can see on the computer right now, we have IPSW.me pulled up, and this is where you're actually gonna download your IPSW file. So the first thing you wanna do is select whether you have an iPhone, iPad, or iPod. In this case, I'm using an iPhone SE, so let's go ahead to iPhone. Then I will find my iPhone SE here. Now, if you have an iPhone 7, you see that you have multiple selections for GSM and also for global. And one way to easily figure out which one you have is by your carrier. So if you have AT&T or T-Mobile as your carrier, that is GSM, and if you have Verizon, or Sprint or any other carrier, you have a global iPhone. But if you do run into any other issues, just try the other one. So for instance, if you have a GSM phone and you download GSM and you have errors, go ahead and download the global version and see if it works that way. But of course, in my instance, I am using an iPhone SE, so I'm just gonna go ahead and click on iPhone SE. And then you can see we're prompted right here with two signed IPSWs, that is 10.2 and 10.2.1. And you can see we have other unsigned IPSWs right here, going back all the way to 9.3. So this is just another way for you to find out whether or not an IPSW or a firmware is still being signed or not. So of course, we're gonna be downgrading or updating to 10.2. So just go ahead and click on 10.2 there. And then you will see right here, you have a download link. Just go ahead and click download and it will download the file. I already did it, so I'm not gonna download it again. All right, so after that, we are done with IPSW.me. We could just go ahead and X out of that. Now you wanna open up iTunes. So once you have iTunes opened up, go ahead and plug your device in. I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel the sync. And you wanna locate your IPSW file. So mine is right here on the desktop right here. You just wanna have it saved anywhere. You don't have to have it on the desktop. Anywhere is fine. And just to prove that I am on iOS 10.2.1, you can see on my phone right here, I am on iOS 10.2.1 inside of settings, general about, and then also on iTunes you can see right there it shows iOS 10.2.1. Now if iTunes isn't showing your phone when you plug it in, you may just need to trust the device. So you may get a prompt on your iPhone screen and also in iTunes saying that it needs to trust. So just go ahead and click on trust and then you will be set. iTunes actually does this sometimes if it's a new device or if it's a new computer, or it's just been a while since you've actually opened up iTunes and connected your device. And now I do also wanna mention that before you go any further, you do need to make an iCloud backup on your device and make sure your contacts are synced up with iCloud as well. Now, once our device is plugged up and we do have iTunes opened up, we're gonna go ahead and option and click on check for update. Now, if you're on a Windows computer, you're gonna shift click 
check for update, or it may just say update, you're gonna shift and click at the same time. And then once you get this prompt here, you're just gonna find the IPSW file that you just downloaded, or you could just drag it on top just like this, and it will locate it for you. And just before we start this, I do wanna also show you on my device that I have 92 emails there. I do also have Instagram and YouTube installed, just to show you that we don't lose any of this data. All right, so now we're just gonna go ahead and click on the IPSW file. And it says iTunes will update your iPhone to iOS 10.2 and will verify the update with Apple. Just go ahead and click on update. And now you see it does start extracting the software and beginning the process. And once this process does begin, you can go ahead and grab some food or a drink because it could take some long time. Scratch that, it will take a long time. So just go ahead and take a break, you know, do whatever you need to do and then come back once it has completed. And if you do run into any kind of error saying that the firmware isn't compatible with your device or anything like that, you need to try rebooting your computer and also reinstalling iTunes or disabling any kind of firewall you may have set up, they could be interfering with this update. Some people also report that you just need to keep on trying if you do get errors, just keep trying over and over again, and it will eventually go through. That is, of course, if iOS 10.2 is still being signed. All right, so if you have a passcode set, you may need to enter it right here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and enter my password and you will see that it will continue the process. So as you can see, we went through that process on our phone, it turned black, had the recovery logo, and now we have the Apple logo with the bar underneath, which is a great sign. So as you can see, it went past the verifying stage and now it is updating the iPhone software. So at this point, you know that it should work and you should be on 10.2 at this point, but of course we do still have to wait for it to finish up on our phone. But then again, you probably won't even be seeing the screen on iTunes or in your iPhone, because again, you're probably gonna be somewhere else doing something better with your time other than just staring at the screen and waiting for this to finish. So when your phone does turn to a black screen and then boots back up with the Apple logo and then a bar underneath, that is fine. You don't even need your computer for this part. All of this takes place on the iPhone itself. All right, so there we go. Let's go ahead and enter in our password and just make sure that we are on iOS 10.2. First of all, we can go ahead over and see that we do still have Instagram and YouTube right there. We do also still have 92 emails unread. So let's go ahead to settings. Let's go to general about. And as you can see down there, we are in fact on iOS 10.2. So that is how you can upgrade or downgrade to iOS 10.2 without losing any of your important data. So now that you are on iOS 10.2, you will be able to jailbreak your device with the new Yalu jailbreak, which you can find at jailbreakme10.com. And you can stay tuned to ICUs and also my own channel for continuous coverage and tutorials on this jailbreak. Now I did also want to mention that you should save your SHSH2 blobs for iOS 10.2. Now essentially these blobs will allow you to upgrade or downgrade to 10.2 even after it stops being signed by Apple. Space again, dash I space, then we're gonna enter in the firmware we wanna save blobs for, in this case it's 10.2. Then we're gonna hit space again, and we're gonna do dash dash build ID space, and then we enter in the build number for that firmware that we just entered with dash I. So 10.2, the build ID for the public version of 10.2 is 14C92. I will have a link to that tutorial down in the description below, so be sure to check that out. You should definitely do this even if you are on 10.2 at the moment. So anyways guys, there you have it. That is how you downgrade or update to iOS 10.2 without losing any of your data to get prepared for the iOS 10.2 jailbreak. Hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, be 
sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also make sure to go ahead and check out my channel. Go ahead and check out some of my content, see if you'd like it. If you do, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe to the channel. Also, of course, make sure to subscribe to ICU's channel here where you're watching this video if you aren't already. So thank you guys so much again for watching and I will see you soon.